All right, guys, we've talked about, or I know you guys have talked about this light spectrum in other classes. Uh, Roy G. Biv is the pretty much common thing that a lot of science teachers have used to talk about the color spectrum, the visible color spectrum. We have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And then here we just have some various wavelengths that some of these items are measured at. Gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet rays. We have our infrared rays, radar, FM waves, TV, uh, AM, and shortwave. Okay, so all of these different items are measured with different wavelengths. And so are the different chlorophyll molecules that we're going to see here in the next part of the notes. Just like the melanin in our skin is a type of pigment, chlorophyll is a type of pigment that is found in the leaves of plants. It is the major pigment. There are two types. There are chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And down there on the, the last bullet there, uh, the last thing, it doesn't have chlorophyll B, but you should write chlorophyll B there. It's chlorophyll A and chlorophyll, but it doesn't have the B there, so you need to write that in. <coughs> they absorb blue, violet, and red regions of the spectrum, and they reflect green. So what we see, the colors we see are what's reflected. That's not what's being absorbed. Colors we see again are, is what's reflected. All right, so this process takes place inside of the chloroplast, but more specifically inside of the thylakoid membrane. Very important that we understand where each part of photosynthesis takes place. And so the thylakoids are grouped together. It looks like coins or stacks, and they're called grana. And this is where all the pigment and all the processes are going to take place inside of the thylakoid membrane. And then another part that we're going to go over here next will take place inside of the stroma, which we see is the, it's kind of like the cytoplasm inside of the chlor chloroplast. Okay, this chloroplast just provides a visual of what we just took notes on. See, one individual disc is a thylakoid, a stack of them would be grana, and then it shows us pointing into the space where the stroma would be. And again, the stroma is akin to the cytoplasm that you would find in our cells. Chlorophyll and its interaction with electrons is kind of like sugar and caffeine with our interaction with our bodies, okay? Whenever we eat sugar and caffeine in excess, or even a little bit, depending on the person, we get excited. Well, electrons get energized when sunlight shines on them. Electrons get energized, they have a lot of energy to be shared, and so these electrons are then passed through the process of photosynthesis. This equation is one that you're gonna have to remember, so you're gonna have to learn to memorize this equation. But once you know this equation, you also know the equation for cellular respiration because photosynthesis and cellular respiration are kind of like the opposites of one another. So the reactants for photosynthesis would be the products for cellular respiration. And that's why you see the arrow going in both directions. So we have six molecules of carbon dioxide combined with six molecules of water, light, being shined on there and chlorophyll, both of those things are kind of serving as catalysts for this equation. And what you're gonna produce is sugar and oxygen. C6H12O6, that's a monosaccharide. It is glucose or fructose, and it is a sugar as well. And those are the byproducts. Now, we get both of these things when we interact with plants. Number one, the oxygen that we need to breathe is a byproduct of that and also when we eat vegetables and we eat the stems and leaves of those vegetables and the fruit that these plants produce we are getting carbohydrates from that <coughs> two parts to this photosynthetic process one is very dependent on the direct interaction with light thus it is named light dependent reaction and there we see it says it needs light it also has light absorbing pigments. So these pigments get energized, absorb those light, those electrons get excited, and then those electrons are gonna be used to make that chemical storing molecule ATP. Okay. All of this takes place in the thylakoid membrane. You need water. 
Water is essential for this process because what happens is that water molecule is split. And if you split water, you split, you separate into its parts. What is water made of? Well, it's made of oxygen, electrons, and protons. It is also made up of hydrogen, electrons, and protons. And those electrons and protons are both <coughs> going to be used in the process to help produce the products of photosynthesis. So it says our byproduct there equals oxygen. Okay, this illustration just highlights each part. We see the light dependent reaction being highlighted first or drawn around there. In the chloroplast molecule, we see also what goes into it. So we see the reactant of water in the first part and we see oxygen coming out. We also see two molecules here that are ready to be created. We have NADP, which will become NADPH, and we have ATP plus a phosphate, which will become what? ATP, very good, okay. So for our light independent part, we have carbon dioxide. That's where it's directly gonna go into. Calvin cycle is named after the scientists that discovered it, Melvin Calvin, and then sugars are produced. Why does the plant need to produce sugars? Well, the same reason we need to eat things. Plants need to produce their sugars their proteins, their fats in order to function and live like we need to consume those things. That's why they are autotrophs. That's why they are photosynthetic organisms. Okay, so the carbon dioxide comes here. Okay, this is the second part. Okay, light independent reactions. The name gives it away. Doesn't mean that it necessarily occurs in the dark. It means that it does not need the direct sunlight in order to operate. So carbon dioxide will go in, sugars and other carbohydrates will be produced. Those sugars and other carbohydrates are essential for the plant um, to operate, okay? The other thing that's produced is ATP and NADPH. Those items are gonna be produced and this takes place in the stroma, whereas the first part took place in the thylakoid membrane. Okay, this diagram highlights the other aspect of photosynthesis. So now we see that the Calvin cycle or light independent reaction is highlighted. It shows us our reactants. So carbon dioxide in this part is a reactant and the product would be what? Sugars, okay. Okay, now we just have a series of little questions that you guys already have the answers to. Uh, plants use sugars and produced in photosynthesis to make starches. The raw materials required for plants to carry out photosynthesis are CO2 and water. The main pigment, the major pigment, is called chlorophyll. We know that there are two types of those. The colors of light that are absorbed by chlor chlorophyll are blue, violet, and red. Now there are other pigments that exist in the leaves of plants. Now, we don't necessarily see it down here, but if you ever go to the northeast or the north of our country, and during, during this time of the year, the leaves have changed colors. That's because temperature, uh, chlorophyll is dominant during certain temperatures, but when the temperature drops, it is not as dominant, and that's when the other pigments called carotenoids, xanophils, all kinds of different pigments uh, show more, okay? Most plants appear green because this light is being reflected. Okay, chlorophyll struck by sunlight. What happens? The electrons become energized. Calvin cycle is another name for light independent reactions. The product of the Calvin cycle is what? High energy sugars. Good.